Right now, Iran is sitting down for nuclear talks in Kazakhstan, the first in eight months, in fact. Iran says it's preparing to make an offer to the West in return for easing some of the sanctions that have been in place over the last several months. In the meantime, in Germany, Secretary of State John Kerry is calling on Iran to choose diplomacy. What I will do in the middle of these talks today here in Germany is express my hope, and I think our hope, that these talks can advance uh, that dialogue and that Iran itself will make its choice uh, to move down the path of a diplomatic solution. Mark Dubowitz is the executive director of the Foundation for Defense of Democracies. His expertise, of course, Iran and the sanctions. Mark, John Kerry has hope. Do you? Hi, Jenna. Well, no, I have no hope because if you're Iran's supreme leader, Ali Khamenei, and his revolutionary guards, you, there is no reason for you to compromise. Your nuclear program is moving quickly to undetectable breakout, and you have tens of billions of dollars and euros worth of foreign exchange reserves, which are your principal weapon against the impact of sanctions. So Iranian nuclear physics is beating Western economic pressure. Why compromise? Is there anything we can do about that? Well, I think there is. I mean, number one, I think we can massively intensify these sanctions so that we bring the Iranian regime to the brink of economic collapse. And we've got to have a credible threat of military force. The United States has got to make it clear to Iran's supreme leader that if he moves forward to undetectable breakout, the United States military will destroy his nuclear facilities. What would that look like, Mark, a credible military threat? Well, a credible military threat means that the United States, both in its... Uh, positioning of military assets and in its rhetoric makes it very clear that we have the means and the will to destroy Iran's nuclear facilities. Right now the Iran supreme leader doesn't take us seriously. He thinks we're bluffing. He doesn't believe that this administration is serious about using military force as a last resort. Do you think it would have to come from the president himself, a speech from the president uh, suggesting that we know the president is headed towards the Middle East uh, next month in, in an apparent attempt to uh, show his relationship, his strong relationship with Israel? Is that an opportunity? I think it's a perfect opportunity for President Obama in Israel to make it very clear to the Israeli people, to the American people, and most importantly, to Iran's supreme leader and his revolutionary guards that this president is committed to stopping Iran from developing nuclear weapons capability. Again, they are rushing towards undetectable breakout and by mid-2014 the Iranians will be able to produce a bomb's worth of weapon grade uranium or sufficient separated plutonium in a manner, in a, in a pace that is so quick that it will be undetectable by Western intelligence services and the IAEA. So President Obama needs to make it clear now that the Iranians are racing towards a bomb and the United States will do everything possible to stop it. So what do you think about these talks then, Mark? Are these talks, these negotiations, having Iran at the table, are they helping or are they hurting the process? Well, listen, I think it's always important to show a diplomatic option. I think it's important to demonstrate to the Iranians that if they're willing to comply with their international obligations, there is a diplomatic solution. So there's nothing wrong with diplomatic talks. The problem is the Iranians are using diplomatic talks to string along the international community to continue to build towards critical nuclear capability and are looking for ways to try and divide the international community and get sanctions relief from the Russians, from the Chinese and others. So as long as we are sober about what these talks can accomplish, there's nothing wrong with engaging in them, but we've got to be careful that we're not strung along for another round of endless negotiations that get us nowhere. And share a little bit with our viewers, Mark, because there's been reports recently of Iran using old ships, these old ships that they've had their hands on to transport oil without us seeing it. We've also heard Iran talk a little bit about humanitarian crises that are happening inside the country because of our sanctions. So we're essentially being blamed for Iranians not having food and medical supplies. That hasn't hit full tilt, but it gives us some sort of indication about where this conversation is going in the, in, in, in the global community. So just tell us a little bit about what, what you know about what's going on inside Iran and how effective these sanctions have really been. Well, listen, the sanctions have been effective, but they're not effective enough. They haven't brought the Iranian regime to the, the brink of economic collapse. The Iranians are engaged in massive sanctions busting. You mentioned these ship-to-ship -ship transfers to disguise the origin of their oil. And they're manufacturing a humanitarian crisis. There is no humanitarian crisis in Iran today. The Iranians have billions of dollars worth of local currency sitting in Japanese and South Korean and Indian bank accounts. And they can use that money to buy all the food and medicine that they need for the Iranian people. If they're not using that money, 
to meet the humanitarian needs of the Iranian people. That's the regime's fault, and the U.S. administration has got to make that clear. We've done an awful job on the public relations side of making that clear. Some good context for us today, Mark, as always. Thank you. Thanks so much, Jenna.